for your business continuity planning team. And this is a team effort. You need, uh, you need participation from a lot of different areas. And uh, not all of them are, are going to be uh, completely full-time involved in it. You know, a lot of people are seconded. Um, and some people, uh, well, well, we'll get into that, but, you know, maybe only for check-ins at different times or to get uh, information at various stages in the process. But who should you have? Who should you ask? Who should you contact um, and get their participation? Computer security, obviously. Uh, we are... Um, the ones primarily involved with this. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, now there are some companies that will have a separate uh, business continuity team. Um, I've, well, you know, good on you if, you if you've got the resources to do that, have the specialists and so forth. Um, but uh, by and large, um, you know, in a lot of companies, it's, it's going to come out of computer security anyways. Internal audit. Uh, again, you know, they, the auditors are going to um, be involved in assessing this anyways. And um, they, you know, as I say, there's, there's going to be a... Uh, situation, uh, a bit of a conflict in terms of uh, the auditor should be assessing your plan, critiquing your plan, and that sort of thing, but they also need to tell you um, aspects of the plan that need to be put in place to allow for audit <coughs> during a disaster. Because during a disaster, our normal trails, paper trails, checks, uh, and so forth are uh, not going to be available, possibly. We need to make sure that there is a bit of a backstop there. So, um, legal. Uh, there are going to be all kinds of legal aspects um, to this. Uh, you will need to know what your liabilities are, what your responsibilities are, what, if you don't do it, constitutes negligence. Um, so a, a number of, of areas there. Um, also, what do we do in terms of vendor contracts? What can we hold a vendor to? What can't we hold a vendor to? Um, how, do we, how do we word those contracts? to ensure that people do provide what they say they're going to provide. Human resources and, and public relations. Um, now, human resources, of course, we're going to deal with personnel. Um, we don't want to impose things on personnel, but we do want to get buy-in. We also want to provide uh, resources, personal resources for the personnel on whom we're going to rely in the event of an emergency. So, um, you know, I, that can get tangled up in issues of union contracts and so forth. Um, it is best to have human resources uh, as, as part of the team to address issues like that. Now, the uh, the public relations aspect, um, what do you communicate? What do you tell the general public? What do you tell customers um, during a disaster? What information goes on? This is, again, a non-trivial task. This is not a standard um, situation for communications, business communications, and so forth. Um, you know, we may be in the news. Uh, I, I know um, 
in emergency support services. We are very leery of talking to uh, the press. Um, and we ensure that that is addressed by uh, only by people at, you know, the higher pay grade, even though we're all volunteers, um, so that we don't have contradictory information, so that we don't have, you know, somebody's offhand reaction uh, being promulgated as uh, you know, policy, uh, things like that. So we need to... Um, consider how we're going to deal with communications and, and public relations is uh, going to be a part of that now um, corporate uh, investigations and corporate security um, they should be part of this you know the physical security they, you know a disaster is going to probably involve uh, physical problems so we're going to need them um, IT, you know, information technology, information systems, whatever. Um, we, you know, uh, the, the general uh, IT people definitely have to be involved in terms of what do they need to keep which systems running. Um, systems programmers. Uh, again, you know, the, the people who are responsible for keeping the uh, wheels going round. Um, we're going to need to uh, have them so that we know what they need. Um, senior executive representative. Now, um, this is not necessarily the CEO. As a matter of fact, the CFO is probably a better choice. You are going to need resources. You are going to need somebody um, who is supporting you who is able to get you those financial resources. Um, but in any case, you need somebody from the C-suite on the team, um, party to the discussions, so that when we take things to management, we have already addressed uh, some of what management's objectives may be, and that person can uh, advocate on our behalf. So, um, senior uh, people are, are definitely wanted. External contacts, we, you know, again, our vendors, our suppliers, our infrastructure uh, providers, um, a number of people in, in that category can be included in our, our team. So... Uh, customers, shareholders, um, civic officials. Um, we have uh, a situation, you know, with a, a regional disaster where it it can come to the point where, okay, we are not in business anymore, but we still have some resources that could be used by the broader community. Um, you know, have connections with your civic officials. Um, to address that kind of contingency. If we can't be in business, at the very least, we can use our resources to uh, assist the uh, community around us and, and build up some goodwill, which we are going to need because, you know, we have been down for a while. Uh, utility providers. Well, we talked about that. Um, industry coalitions. Um, uh, the media, uh, yeah, um, we'll talk about the media.